Hello again, Dave Tosh, Executive Director of the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. Today I'm here with uh, Earl and Barbara Tilly, longtime Valley residents. I don't know that they've actually really even left the Valley much, but I knew, I knew that they would be going south here soon, down to Palm Desert, and we had to catch them before they, they left town. And so I'm um, very, very happy to be able to, to meet with them today and chat a little bit about things not only at, about the Senior Center, but in our community. And that's really uh, what we're trying to communicate uh, to the folks here in the Valley is all the, uh, all the things that the Senior Center gets involved with, but also a lot of the members and what all they're doing for the community. And the Tillies, I don't know um, if they've set any records, but I, I can tell you that they have devoted a lot of their lives to community service within the Wenatchee Valley. And uh, we should be very, very proud of all the things that they've accomplished. I will say this, that I did grow up in Kashmir. You might notice my orange shirt that I'm wearing today. Um, Barbara also grew up in Kashmir. And Earl, not too far away, up in Dryden. So uh, we got a little bit in common there because uh, when you grow up in a small community, you tend to cross paths with a lot of people. Well, I want to tell one little story and then I'm going to have, uh, have Barbara speak a few minutes. So in Kashmir, we had three barber shops. And one of them was owned by Barbara's dad and his name was Waldo. Last name Bartroff. Well, the children in town gravitated to Waldo. Uh, in fact, uh, there were times where the line, I think, was, was coming out the door, so to speak. They'd, they'd kind of stand along the edge of the, the building there waiting to get in to get a chair after school was out. I do remember some of those days. So uh, Waldo had a famous saying to calm kids down when they got in the chair and they were acting up or, or not minding. Uh, he would uh, kind of pull on their earlobe and uh, say, and put his little razor out there and say, how about some ear soup? I do remember that. I think he had, to, he had to do that with me one time. I don't know that he ever had to do it again. But those are memories, fond memories that I have of growing up in Kashmir. And, uh, you know, Barbara's uh, <clears throat> mother was a kindergarten teacher there in Kashmir for years. And uh, fortunately, she didn't have to deal with me in her class because I don't recall her being my kindergarten teacher. I think I've talked already quite a bit. I wanted to, uh, to just have Barbara kind of maybe uh, substantiate the story I just told and just speak a little bit about, uh, about her upbringing in Kashmir and in the Valley. And, uh, and then we'll go on from there. Fine, David, thank you. No, what you told was true. Um, uh, I was closer to my mom than I was to my dad, I guess because of uh, her uh, Christian faith and active in the church, the Baptist church that was right next door to your parents' business. Yeah. And uh, my mother always felt that uh, the important thing in life was to be helping others, not, not to be so concerned about yourself and what you were doing, but help others. And I remember I always had two jars. If I earned a dollar babysitting, I had to put 10 cents into my church jar and 10 cents into my college jar. And so she inspired me all through life. And to this day, I look back at her as being the one who influenced me to be want to be active in the community and really help other people. You know, I am um, a uh, Rotarian. I've been a Rotarian for, for a long time. I started out in the Tacoma area and carried my membership over here. I'm not in the same club with you folks. But uh, I know there's been multiple occasions where you've cl come to my Rotary Club to speak of some of the things that you do within the community. And this packing friendship is a, is, has really grown into a large program. Um, and you're pretty much the, the instigator of that whole thing. Could you talk just a little bit about what that program's about and, and what you've accomplished? 
Well, uh, Dave, it was 10 years ago that our missions committee, we call the Social Concerns Committee at Grace Lutheran Church, got a letter from Mary Ann McCauley, a former music teacher in Wenatchee who'd moved to the Gig Harbor area. And she said her church was doing weekend food bags for needy children, and she thought we should look into that. And so our missions committee looked at the project. We, we didn't know if there was a need, so we decided to do a pilot project of 18 students at 10 years ago. Now we're up to a little over 500 students every Friday, except right now when the children are not at school. We'll be going back doing it. And we have 20-some uh, churches involved, two Rotary Clubs involved, and two parent-teacher implementing the program. Well, I know that uh, our Rotary Club has taken that on as one of our key service projects that, that we do every year. And you do a great job. And uh, it makes you feel good that you're, you're doing something for your community, especially younger folks. Um, maybe at this point I'll turn it over to Earl a little bit, changing subjects. Um, Earl had a lot, and he denies all this, but Earl had much to do with uh, how the Senior Center uh, was built and organized. And I've often told people it, it was an amazing story, still is an amazing story, because we have this great facility, great organization. Uh, we celebrated our 25th anniversary. It's been now two years ago. And so uh, I just thought I would have Earl speak a, a little bit about some of his involvement early on. And I know I've got the facts because I have the videotapes of some of the events that you were at and you spoke about, so I know the truth. Uh oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, my interest in uh, senior programs started when I was in the legislature and I was on a select committee uh, for uh, adult uh, care and uh, learned about respite daycare, learned about nutrition programs, learned about health, health programs that uh, seniors need. But uh, and usually about once a year, I'd be invited by the, the membership at the senior center, which met in the old YMCA building. And uh, the, I can remember, the, especially as the one president, I can't, she was a member of our church, kept saying to me, we're going to have our own center someday. And so after she said this a few times, I said, you know, if you ever find a site, I'll be glad to help raise money for it. So a future president, Johnson, uh, bought, bought the land and kind of forced it on the members. And uh, he, he came to me and said, uh, you promised that you would help raise money. <laughs> Gulp. <laughs> so uh, I called a meeting and, uh, of, of leaders in the community and uh, a lot of them were Rotarians. And uh, out of that, we developed a, uh, a plan to, to raise money, but nobody would step up to the plate to be the chair. So Benita McLean suggested, why didn't we see if Bill Stewart, Dr. Bill Stewart, the former president of the college, would help us? We took uh, Bill to lunch, or breakfast, I guess it was, and, uh, a day later, he accepted. And that was a big, big step for us. Uh, and I, I remember the thing that he told us very early, those of us around the table. He said that, you know, it's good that you're here. It's good that you're going to go ask people to give to this project. But before you can ask anyone to give money to this program, you've got to be able to give to yourself. So he passed out sheets of paper <laughs> and everybody had to fill one out. I mean, he kind of locked the door on us. <laughs> so, so the other thing that uh, was very, very important was to get a strong building committee. And we were able to recruit uh, Carl Campbell, Earl Cusick, and Lonnie DeCamp. And, Carl, you know, had had a lot of experience uh, building uh, nursing homes, and he had a superintendent that had worked for him named Jerry Dawes. And Jerry was fabulous. 
Earl Cusick, of course, was in the construction business with his uh, brother and brother-in-law, and uh, he had he had lots of contacts, and so uh, they got started building, and and uh, we had we raised the money, and uh, it, it it was a success uh, today. Uh, I remember asking Earl Cusick. I said, "How did you do this for fifty dollars a square foot?" He said, "With mirrors." I mean, he he was <laughs> he was a humble guy. So you know, and now, now to come out here, and uh, of course it's quiet today, but uh, you know I've been here many many times, and it's a thrill to me to see that former vision become a reality and, and a success. You know, one of the, uh, the interesting, maybe even funny uh, things that I've heard over the years, I have been here seven years now, so I have heard a few stories, and I, and I do remember most of them. But uh, apparently, uh, early on, uh, one of the members that was meeting downtown at the, uh, the old location next to the YMCA, when, when they heard about, uh, about where the senior center was going to go, they said, in the country? What do you mean, we're moving out into the country? Well, I guess it kind of was back then. Uh, you know, I know Foothills was being built about the same time, middle school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I saw some of the pictures. And yeah, I think the, the road out here on Maple is a two-lane road with a lot of orchards and things like that. But, um, uh, who knows if somebody really had a vision for how this whole area was going to turn out, but it, it is a great location to have the senior center in this part of uh, the city, Absolutely. as it turns out. And uh, obviously, uh, we've done a lot with it. Uh, we've even had to replace the roof once, but uh, the, the facility is being well maintained, in my opinion, and I think that uh, we're going to be here for a long time to come. And I, I think even... Adding to that, what I would say is it's really nice to be independent and not have to rely on other entities to take care of us. And that's what I'll say about that. We have managed to figure it out, you know, in terms of uh, where the money's going to come from and, and being able to meet all of our obligations. Never took on any debt whatsoever, thanks to the fundraising efforts that went on early. Most organizations like this would have had to, you know, borrow some money. Never had to do that. Never have done that. And I think it speaks volumes for uh, where we're at today. And we're, we figured it out. I, I always joke with Bonita, the first director you mentioned. And uh, I said, Bonita, it must have been an interesting feeling when they when they had this brand new building and somebody hands you the keys and said, Go figure it out. <laughs> well, I haven't had to figure it out so much as the as the as the initial crew came in, uh, but we have over the years. We've been able to, to figure it out. And well, being I, independent is great. And I think that the, we've been very fortunate to have quality people heading up the the programs here. Yeah. Your yeah. pat, your the people that f succeeded you before before you preceded you, uh, were all very very good people. Yes, very talented people that set up a lot of the systems and and, and the organization that we're still functioning with today. We had when I got here seven years ago, I really didn't have to make a lot of changes. I mean, uh, I can't tell you the exact number, but I would say over well over half of the people on our staff were here when I got here. And uh, all but one of the salaried staff are, are, uh, are here still. And so we've had continuity. And our board as well, we've had tremendous continuity. That's a big thing for me. I served in the military for 20 years. I saw a lot of people coming and going. It was almost like a revolving door. There's people coming and going all the time. How do you build an organization? How do you get cohesiveness, you know? And uh, we've had a lot of that here. So we've been very blessed. And again, uh, so much of it through your efforts with uh, early on with the fundraising and, and getting, getting people in place. Any more comments about that? <laughs> I think you covered it quite well. <laughs> and you are doing a terrific job. Let's, let's be sure to add that. Well, I, and I think uh, Just you terrific. Know, being, being from the community means a lot to me. You know, when I say the community, I'm talking about the greater Wenatchee Valley. Mm -hmm. I, to me, it's all one big community. We all try to work together. 
Uh, but I've always admired the folks that, that really step out there and do things for their organizations and the community as a whole. And I, I haven't even touched on some of the other things that you folks have been involved with. I know you mentioned the church, and we talked about the Rotary Club. And I know that uh, you've worked with the Boy Scouts. And I know that uh, Barbara's worked with the symphony. I mean, just talk a little bit about, about that, uh, the, your, your work with the symphony and some of the other organizations. I know you're, uh, the, the church is very important to you folks. It is. Grace, Grace Lutheran. Yeah. Yes, but uh, yes, we've tried to uh, have a variety in the things that we've worked on in the community. And uh, most of the time we were working on separate things, not working together, except Earl was one of the ones that was instrumental in bringing Habitat, and I did take over the presidency of that to help it move along a little. And uh, uh, it's, this is a wonderful place to gather volunteers, as you have mentioned about the Senior Center. No matter what project you're on, people love to volunteer in this community. I've never seen anything any better than this. Well, we do. We have, uh, we have volunteers that uh, have pretty much devoted their lives to coming here. And, and, and I'm not talking about just here and there. They'll commit to a certain uh, function or, or activity that we have or, or a uh, special fundraiser. And you say that every year that goes by, we call them up and say, are you ready to go again? Oh yeah, we're ready, we're ready to go. And I could go through a long laundry list of all of those activities. And, and I'll just say this real quick, uh, one of our largest fundraisers of the year is our craft fair, and we're not gonna be able to hold that craft fair this year. But one of the ladies that uh, was here every single year running the, the kitchen with our, what we call the snack shack, Bonnie Sanders, uh, uh, just recently passed away, and, and so I know without a doubt that we're going to find somebody that's going to stand up and say, I'm ready to go and take care of, of that snack shack when we need them in there. And so it's a, it's a good feeling, though. It really is, and, and it's a matter of just picking up the phone sometimes. So, Earl, as we conclude our get-together today, You've done so many things, but is there, what, what is the one thing that you had the most gratification uh, in, in accomplishing uh, in all of the projects you've done here in, in Wenatchee? Well, I would say it was the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. I mean, this is uh, the, a jewel for our, our, our entire valley with members of, from other communities who come here on a regular basis and enjoy them the various services and programs that you're offering. And I, the meals here are excellent. You know, and that's, that's an important aspect. You've, you've got a good staff here. Other, you know, there are other things that, you know, you're, you can probably take pride for being a part of. And uh, it, but, you know, that just kind of goes with the jobs that I've had, whether it's in the, the legislature helping people who've got a problem somewhere with a state agency like either DSHS or LNI and mm -hmm. uh, taking their case to the appropriate manager for, of that program and telling them, asking them to review it and see if they're handling that case properly, mm -hmm. if there's the rest of the story, so to speak. And well, you've done a lot in, the, in your lifetime here. <laughs> and, you know, and, and little things that, uh, as mayor, and these are little things, but they're important. So in 1993, I was elected to the mayor. Uh, I, I remember going to the budget hearing before I was uh, sworn in, and they, you know, they were talking about buying another car for the mayor. And I said, you know, I don't need a car. <laughs> give, give that car to somebody who really needs it. <laughs> uh, they were talking about uh, putting in a new fuel station down at, uh, on Worthen Street where the old public works building was. And I don't know, it was going to run 40, 50 grand, something like that. And I said, you know, just I wonder if we could work a deal with the PUD and get them to, to we could refuel there. 
So I contacted the PUD. They said, sure. Which, so then yeah. the other thing was that the parks in, uh, down on the river, when they were built, the, the PUD built those parks. But the city at that in 1993 was still trying to take care of them. And they didn't have enough money to do it properly. And so the PUD was in the process of relicensing one of the dams. I think it was Rock Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, you know, they had to prove stewardship of the river. And I said to Don Kay, I couldn't talk to Barbara, but to Don <laughs> Kay, <laughs> Don Kay, I said, Don, I said, you know what? I think it would really help your relicensing if you, you guys took back the park maintenance. Mm -hmm. And they, they got back to us, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Easy vote. And that was, was, but that saved the city $200,000 a year. Mm -hmm. But there again, cooperation. Yeah, yeah. Well, Barbara, did you want to speak about that, uh, that little decision that was made there? <laughs> right. Uh, try not to talk about it over the dining room table. <laughs> no, uh, I was going to say that you know, my charitable organizations that probably were my favorites were Habitat for Humanity and Packing Friendship. But my job favorite was uh, being a PUD commissioner for two terms. That's t uh, two six-year terms. And... Um, you know, we have some of the cheapest power in the nation, which enables a lot of wonderful things to happen in this area. So it was very rewarding to be part of the policy making for that decision. And then the next thing I would have mentioned, too, is the parks. What a thing that has changed the culture of the Wenatchee Valley to have the yeah. trail. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure we run into both of you on the trail. but. Oh, yeah. uh, those are some of the highlights, but then it comes down also to being able to help some poor family. Mm -hmm. That's, wouldn't you say that's one of my really, that keeps me awake at night, that it's so rewarding when you can see a change in the family's life because someone has helped them get an opportunity they wouldn't have had. Very much so. That's all. Well, thank you, both of you, uh, today for sharing uh, some of those memories and and ideas, I uh, I really appreciate it. I know the folks that are tuning in are 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 really probably smiling and and uh, saying to themselves, these people made a really big difference in our community, and we appreciate it.